Something extraordinary has just happened. A discovery so shocking, it could reshape everything we thought we knew about the moon and about humanity's future in space. For decades, we believed the moon was nothing more than a barren, lifeless rock, a dead world frozen in time. But now, China has uncovered evidence that tells a very different story. A story of hidden resources, strange minerals, and possibilities that could transform the moon into humanity's first true outpost beyond Earth. This is not just a mission. This is not just science. This is the beginning of a new chapter for humanity. And it all started with China's Chang'e program. Humanity's Long Obsession with the Moon Since the dawn of civilization, the moon has fascinated humanity. It guided our calendars, inspired myths, and shaped entire religions. The Chinese saw it as the realm of goddess Chang'e, the immortal who flew to the moon. The Greeks imagined it as the home of Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. And in every culture, the moon represented mystery, power, and wonder. But it wasn't until the mid-20th century that humanity finally touched the moon for real. The Cold War sparked the original space race, with the United States and the Soviet Union locked in a technological battle for dominance. In 1969, the world watched in awe as Neil Armstrong stepped onto the lunar surface declaring, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Between 1969 and 1972, six Apollo missions brought back over 380 kilograms of lunar rock and soil. But after Apollo 17 in 1972, the race ended. The Soviets gave up, the Americans stopped, and for decades, the moon fell silent. Silent until China entered the scene. The Rise of China's Lunar Program in the early 2000s, while much of the world focused on Mars rovers and the International Space Station, China had a different plan. They set their sights on the moon. In 2007, China launched Chang'e-1, its first lunar orbiter. It mapped the surface in incredible detail, preparing the way for landings. In 2013, Chang'e 3 touched down, delivering the U 2 rover to explore the lunar surface. It was the first soft landing on the moon since 1976. Then came Chang'e 4 in 2019. This mission did something no one else had ever attempted. It landed on the far side of the moon, the side we never see from Earth. The mission was a triumph proving that China had the technology and ambition to push beyond what even the United States had done. But it was Chang'e 5 in 2020 that truly made history. It brought back lunar samples for the first time in more than 40 years, over 2 kilograms of pristine material. These samples revealed volcanic activity more recent than scientists thought possible, and even traces of water. And then came the boldest mission yet, Chang'e 6 in 2024, a mission that would change everything. Chang'e 6, the far side sample return. Landing in the vast South Pole Aitken Basin, Chang'e 6 faced challenges unlike any other mission. The far side of the moon is shielded from direct radio communication with Earth, so China had to deploy a relay satellite, Kik Chow, positioned beyond the moon to bounce signals back. The lander touched down safely in June 2024. Using a robotic arm and a drill, it collected nearly two kilograms of lunar soil and rock from the far side, something no country had ever achieved. The samples were sealed in containers, blasted back into orbit, docked with the return module, and finally, after a journey of nearly three weeks, landed safely back on Earth. It was a breathtaking technological achievement, but what those samples contained was even more breathtaking. The shocking discovery. When scientists opened the Chang'e 6 containers, they were stunned. 
Inside were microscopic crystals and minerals that held traces of water, water on the moon, locked inside the very structure of the rocks themselves. This wasn't the first time scientists had hinted at lunar water, but this discovery confirmed something critical. Water may be far more widespread than we thought, even on the far side. And water means survival. It means astronauts could one day live off the land, extracting and purifying water instead of hauling it from Earth at enormous cost. It means agriculture. It means rocket fuel. It means independence from Earth's supply chain. But that wasn't the only revelation. The samples also contained a previously unknown lunar mineral. The strange crystal structure provided clues about ancient volcanic activity on the moon. It told us that the far side wasn't just a dead wasteland, it was once a place of geological dynamism, with molten magma, eruptions, and maybe even conditions that could have supported more complex chemistry than we imagined. Each grain of dust was a time capsule, holding secrets billions of years old, secrets that could explain not only the moon's history, but Earth's own violent past. The Importance of Water why is the discovery of lunar water so important? Because water is life. It's also power. On Earth, we take it for granted. But in space, water is the single most valuable resource. Astronauts can drink it. Plants can grow in it. And when split into hydrogen and oxygen, it becomes rocket fuel, the same propellant that launches rockets today. One ton of lunar soil could yield 50 to 70 kilograms of water when heated, according to recent studies. That might not sound like much, but over thousands of tons, it could be enough to support entire bases. Imagine a lunar colony in the 2030s, domes powered by solar energy, greenhouses using purified lunar water, fuel depots storing hydrogen and oxygen for rockets bound from Mars. All of this becomes possible because of discoveries like Chang'e 6. The New Space Race but while this discovery excites scientists, it also raises political tensions. The moon is not just a scientific prize, it's a strategic one. In the 1960s, the Apollo missions were about proving American dominance over the Soviet Union. Today, the moon has become the new arena for global competition. The United States has its Artemis program, aiming to return astronauts to the moon by 2026. NASA plans to build a gateway space station in lunar orbit and eventually establish a permanent base near the South Pole. India, with its Chandrayaan-3 success, has shown it's a serious contender. Japan, Europe, and even private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are preparing missions. But with Chang'e 6, China has taken the lead in one crucial area, returning samples from the far side. No one else has done it and whoever controls the moon's resources may hold the key to the next century of human civilization. The legal and ethical questions. But this raises an important question. Who owns the moon? According to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, no nation can claim sovereignty over the moon or any celestial body. But that treaty was written before lunar mining was realistic. Today, the lines are blurred. If China builds a base near a water-rich crater, can anyone else use that resource? If private companies mine helium-3 or rare metals, who profits? Will the moon become a shared outpost for humanity or a battleground for nations fighting for control? These questions remain unanswered, but the discoveries of Chang'e 6 bring them closer to reality than ever before. What's next for China? And China isn't stopping. The next missions are already on the launch pad. Chang'e 7, planned for 2026, will land near the lunar south pole to map ice deposits and test new technologies for survival. Chang'e 8 will go even further, experimenting with 3D printing structures out of lunar soil. Together, they are paving the way for a permanent robotic outpost and eventually a human settlement. China has already announced plans for an international lunar research station by the 2030s.
It will be a base powered by solar energy with laboratories, habitats, and mining equipment. And unlike Apollo, which lasted just a few short years, this outpost is designed to last for decades. The bigger picture, why the moon matters. The moon is not just another world. It's the key to unlocking the rest of the solar system. With water and fuel production, the moon could serve as a launch hub for Mars missions. Its low gravity makes launches easier and cheaper than from Earth. Its far side is shielded from Earth's radio noise, making it the perfect place for giant telescopes to peer deep into the universe. And its resources, helium-3, rare earth metals, titanium, could fuel industries that transform both space and Earth's economy. The moon is no longer just a symbol of exploration. It's a foundation, a stepping stone, the first real frontier in humanity's expansion beyond Earth. Conclusion. Dramatic wrap-up. One thing is clear. China's shocking discovery on the moon is only the beginning. What they found in those far-side samples, water, minerals, clues to the moon's fiery past, could transform our future. The moon is no longer silent. It's speaking to us, whispering promises of survival, of exploration, of untapped power. But whether those promises bring humanity together or divide us in competition remains to be seen. So what do you think? Are we standing on the edge of a golden age of exploration or the dawn of a dangerous new race for dominance in space? Let me know in the comments. And if you love uncovering the biggest mysteries of the cosmos, don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe. Because the moon has spoken, and it's only the beginning.